resentment, and forgiveness. A lot of what I'm going to say is going to sound very commonsensical, but I think we forget when we're angry. And I think it bears going through this, my philosophy anyway, about this triad. I consider forgiveness an emotion because I don't think that forgiveness, true forgiveness, is a choice. To me, forgiveness is organic. You forgive someone because you love them so much that this thing they did to upset you is not greater than your love for them. And you have no choice. You have no choice. You're going to get over it. You're going to forget about it. People always say, forgive, not forget. I don't know what that means. Because to forgive means that you essentially do forget it until you're reminded of it. Unless that person does it again, or unless someone brings it up. Otherwise, it's for all intents and purposes out of your mind. It doesn't cross your mind. You're not harboring a resentment about it. You truly have forgotten about it. And again, people who will argue about how you can't ever truly forget, what forgetting means is that it's not relevant anymore and it doesn't come up spontaneously. But I think forgiveness is organic. I think that it just happens. And when you choose to forgive someone, that's something different. We call it forgiveness as well, but I think it's on a different level because when you say that I've been wronged, that you have wronged me, but I'm going to give you a pass on it. I'm going to say, all right, it's okay. We can still be friends. But you do remember it does come up in your mind and your interactions with that person are affected by it. That little seed of resentment that can grow into rancor if there are other things that aggravate it, that argues against true forgiveness, which again, just happens. And even if you decide that you're going to forgive somebody that you love, the fact that you've made that explicit decision doesn't change the nature of it when it is indeed organic and automatic and inevitable. The kind that's organic is going to happen. It's unstoppable and nothing else matters. The people that forgive because they have no other choice, because the love is too strong. It's usually a family member, perhaps a spouse. It's someone very, very close to you that you love when it happens organically. And what they did is irrelevant because you have to have them in your life. You're not not going to forgive them. The kind that is more voluntary and is very fragile, it's the conditional forgiveness that it's very much contingent upon the person making it up to you and you do remember it and you do have a tiny little seed of resentment. It's very vulnerable to being undermined because the foundation is weak. That forgiveness, a lot of times people have trouble achieving that because they feel that if they forgive the person that wronged them, they're saying that what they did was okay. And it's important to know that you cannot condone an action. You can condemn an action, but you can come to forgiveness. But blaming other people in general is not a good idea. And that's a tool that we can use to come to forgiveness. Certainly, the person who is always blaming others, that is a character flaw. And there are some people where it's obvious that they're always blaming somebody. They never take responsibility for their own actions even sometimes, but also their problems and the reason that they haven't self-actualized or whatever it is that they're complaining about. They also tend to be complainers. They always, they're pointing the finger of blame. I think all of us have sort of run across that type of person. People who are always blaming others are people who tend not to be good forgivers. To arrive at forgiveness, you have to discard the blame. You have to let go of it. Getting back to the idea of condoning the action. You have to divorce your condemnation of the action from forgiving the transgressor and letting go of any blame. Resentment is poison. Resentment, like anger and hate, punishes the person who's harboring it. Hatred punishes the hater 
Absolutely, by far. Hate is such a poisonous emotion. Emotions that tend to judge and blame someone else. The temptation to judge another person is very strong. It's part of human nature. And we use it as a defense mechanism to make ourselves feel better about ourselves, to rationalize the situation so that we can absolve ourselves. There's a lot of psychological mechanisms whereby someone might do that. But resentment, it's a little seed like a thorn in your side that can fester and it can really kill relationships. If you're holding on to judgment, if you're holding on to any form of condemnation of the individual, that resentment can grow into rancor, frank rancor, where you are accusing that person. And every time you have a fight, you bring it up and you throw it in their face. Forgiveness has not been achieved. If you choose to act out against that person and try to seek some sort of vengeance by being cruel to that person, you're just wallowing in these feelings of anger and possibly hatred. And that is a very, very toxic state to be in. There's no peace, there's no serenity in cultivating that. You should forgive for yourself. Even if you can't have a relationship with that person anymore, even if it leads to estrangement because the relationship is toxic and the person is going to continue to be abusive in whatever way. And so you can't be around that person, even in cases such as those that end in divorce or you never see that person again. You don't talk to them, you don't see them. Even in those cases, you should strive for forgiveness. And a lot of times people will say, how can I forgive this? You do it for you. Forgive for you. And it may not be that organic forgiveness that is automatic, it's almost instantaneous because it's dwarfed by the love that you feel for that person. If it's just that other form of forgiveness that you decide to forgive because it allows you to let go of the anger, that is something that I urge people to do. Wise sages throughout the centuries have echoed this idea, and it's because they realized that you should abide in a state of love and compassion. And you can't do that if you're blaming somebody. Blame is not a useful tool. It's not a useful psychological tool including blaming yourself. If you did something wrong and you're gonna take ownership of it, don't blame yourself and be guilty. Absolve yourself. You're a human being, you make mistakes. Give yourself credit for recognizing that and owning that and not pointing the finger of blame at someone else. And let that be your penance, that you recognize that you did something wrong and that you're gonna to strive not to be that way again. You're gonna to strive to be a better person. And so there's no need to continue blaming yourself. You've already accepted the judgment and you're a better person for it. It's humility that comes into play. And humility is also what you need to forgive someone because the indignation that goes along with the idea that I've been wronged, you're a bad person because you wronged me, I'm not going to recognize your humanity. I'm not going to accept that sometimes people are so angry or so misguided, so blind. If I'm not going to accept any of that and I'm going to sit in judgment and slam the gavel of judgment down and say, no, no, you wronged me and I'm not going to forget it and I'm not going to forgive it because it's bad and that means that you're probably a bad person. And forget about the fact that I may have done something very similar to someone else or so I think that it's arrogant not to forgive and there is a certain arrogance in blaming other people so really we want to strive for humility I'm not personally I'm not a humble person it doesn't come naturally to me humility I have to guard against arrogance I can be overconfident and I guess it's a blessing and a curse I mean there are times where I can draw upon that confidence and recognize my abilities and achieve, but not being humble, it just fuels my anger. 
and being angry has never served me. And if you ask yourselves, has anger and resentment and blaming other people, has any of that ever really resulted in any good for anyone? Examine that and ask yourself if hating somebody for years or simply not loving them for years, is that reflective of the state of grace that we're aiming for? We're human beings. We have to contend with our frailties, our shortcomings. But we can aim for that because therein lies serenity and peace and true happiness. That probably sounds a little, but it's true. It's true. And I certainly am not someone, I'm not a Zen master or a Buddha who is always calm and always loving and compassionate. But I do try to aim for that. It makes for a better life. Those are my thoughts. Comments are welcome.